E-governance is one of the key digitalization topics in Estonia and it comes in many forms. As a start, the Estonian government completely discarded the old paper document-based decision-making system in the year 2000, all in favor of an innovative digital system called e-cabinet. Nowadays, the session hall is free of any stationary electronic devices and politicians can use their own portable devices like laptops and smartphones. But how would they log in? Well, just like the rest of us, via ID card or mobile ID. They can see upcoming meeting agendas and also give preliminary votes on topics before the meeting. Topics that don't face preliminary objections won't even be debated anymore and instead get adopted by default at the beginning of a session. That way, the average session time was cut from around 4 hours to 30 minutes and this led to the creation of paperless parliament. So, since government representatives could vote online, the mindset started to change. Five years later, iVoting was implemented and enabled citizens to cast their votes online for regular elections, be they local, national or European as well. Estonians can vote online since 2005 and Estonia was the first country in the world to have used nationwide iVoting in binding elections. How does iVoting work? Well, you need to download the free voting software, have an internet connection and your ID card or mobile ID. Let's try it on this laptop. So I click on ID card, then enter my PIN 1 to get authenticated. Here I have a selection of the different parties. Let's pick a candidate who is running in my district. Then I confirm my choice and enter my PIN 2, the digital signature. Once that is done, I have officially cast my vote. Let's scan the QR code to see if my vote has arrived correctly at the voting server the way I gave it. However, my vote and the status of my participation are always divided. This system also allows me to change my vote during the i-voting period, which effectively means that I can never be forced or bribed to vote for a certain candidate, which makes it a lot more secure than postal voting could ever be. Moreover, the average cost of a vote cast online is a lot lower than that of a physical vote. And of course, it's also convenient, which is why more and more people use it. iVoting is frequently used by elderly people who otherwise might not be able to physically go to polling stations. Digitalization also helps to verify the validity of civic policy efforts such as proposals and petitions. Most online petition portals suffer from the fact that they use email and IP addresses to verify users. But if you use a VPN to alter your location, you can create as many email accounts and as many signatures on the petition as you want. In Estonia, platforms like the Citizen Initiative use the digital signature so we can use participatory budgeting and include citizens into decision-making processes. But when we talk about e-governance, the biggest question in the room must be how all these services are available to the average Estonian. The state portal, ASTI.ee, serves as a portal for most digital services that we can access online. First, I need to authenticate myself with the familiar options. ID card, mobile ID or smart ID. Once that is done, I have access to services covering topics like healthcare and pensions, doing business, education and leisure. This website helps me find out which of my medical prescriptions are still valid, when my car is due for the next technical inspection, how I can create a company in less than 30 minutes and how to update my digital fishing license. Beyond this, I can also see from the data tracker who has accessed my data, when and for what reason. In Estonia, this is called the truth by design approach. We also have certain services bundled into so-called life events that make those situations easier when you would usually have to get in touch with several government authorities or registries. As you can see, the online services in Estonia are very user-friendly and generally easy to understand so that groups that might otherwise be at a disadvantage, for example the elderly, people who have spent few years in the education system or people with disabilities, are not left behind on the path to digitalization. And this was a crucial realization for the Estonian government. Almost no one truly rejects digital solutions. They just have to be good solutions. An online service that is exactly as complicated as the offline alternative will not get many people excited. But if the online service truly solves a problem for citizens, then it will gain traction. The first service was brought online in 1999, and indeed, it solved a big problem for many people. It was the online tax declaration. By now, people can declare their income tax within three minutes and a few simple clicks. This service, the solution itself, was incentive enough and got many people interested in the other digital services that followed soon after. 
Going beyond simply user-friendly services, Estonia is also working on what we call proactive governance. What does that mean? Well, even though most services are available quite conveniently online for Estonians, it is still ultimately the citizen that approaches the state for a certain service. Proactive services aim to reverse that logic so that the government approaches you when it knows that you are entitled to a certain service. For example, when my doctor registers the birth of my child, I automatically get access to child benefits and other support measures to which I am entitled. Proactive services are particularly powerful in situations where a large majority of the population chooses one option over another. So if 99% of people want child support and 1% does not, then that 1% should be the ones contacting the government to inform them about that decision, not the 99%. In such cases, the benefits of saving time are self-evident and the Estonian government is working on providing such services as we speak. As you can see, e-governance is another one of those topics which show us how the path of digitalization never ends, because there are always new options and solutions that can be implemented. Next up, we will be discussing the topic of mobility services. 